bit strange, isn't it? So we're sat here in the waiting room of hospital and all these children, they're all sat outside in this heat, but the beds are all full. So uh, Desiree's in here today and she's been thrown up and she's got diarrhea, but that's travel for, for miles to get here. And she's just not very well, the poor thing, and it could all be stopped by, you know, having the right vaccinations and... <laughs> So we're just on our way into the R room now. There's an emergency coming, and I mean, this happens countless amounts of times every single day. <coughs> Standing here in a place like this, you just feel so powerless, but I mean, the truth of it is we're not. There's, there's so much we can do, and there's so much we can do now. And, and with the help of Comic Relief, you know, we can stop this from happening in the future. The baby may be crying because of the injection, but she doesn't realise just how important that is. I mean so much that people care about these kids, they're so amazing, I mean they, you can see behind me the slum in which they live is just, you know, vast, there are so many people here yet, you know, some of these lucky kids get to go to school thanks to the money that, that you guys raise at home, so it's just, uh, it's so amazing to see, you know, some things are going up. We were in the class then, just with the kids, filming some of the music video. And uh, Cynthia wrote me a little letter, bless it. it, says, Dear Liam, I am very glad to write you this letter. I hope you are doing well. The reason for writing you this letter is to thank you for coming to visit us. I don't know what to say to you. What I want to say is that may God Almighty bless you in abundance. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you, your faithful friend, Cynthia. That is so beautiful, bless her. I mean, it's amazing as well, the English that they're learning here, so it's absolutely incredible, so sweet. Who's the best at football? <laughs> I'm tired now. <laughs> I like my friends. It's real football. Woo. You're following up. Wow! That is serious talent. We're about to go and meet Yakubu now, who's a chef. And uh, Yakubu was helped last time by all the money that was raised by Comic Relief, so we're going to go and find out how he's getting on. Nice to meet you. I'm Liam. How's it going, Yakubu? Yeah, smells good. Smells good. What are we cooking? I'm not very good at this. You're much better. Right, let's see the man in action. There we go. It's not easy. <laughs> right then, well, I've been fired on my first day, so... One thing that's really struck me whilst being over here is that, you know, although the money you know, will pay for people to have vaccinations and, and, and save a lot of lives. It also gives, it changes lives and it gives people hope. Now we're cooking. Meeting Yakubu, he's got a lot of pride about him and I think that's really nice, the fact that, you know, the money that's been raised has given him a lot of hope. It's helped him start a business, helped him feed his community and I can't see a better gift to give to somebody than that. Have you? Hi, I'm Nile from One Direction, and this is what happened when we went to Ghana with Comic Relief. 
So we're here at the hospital. We've come in early in the morning. I personally feel quite uncomfortable in the hospitals in general. It's I kind of find it a little bit, um, a bit strange. Uh, but you know, we're going to go in and see some of the kids here. What's what's your what's your baby's name? Araba. Araba. How old is she? Two years. Two years old. Hello. Do you know what she what she has? What what illness? Mm -hmm. Pneumonia. And the children need to be immunized against a lot of these preventable illnesses like pneumonia and diarrhea. And um, we could have saved this child, you know, almost losing her life. So it's just. Um, this okay. little bottle, which contains the key to um, solving about 60% of our problems. I met a 24-year-old mum who just sells sunglasses on the street. Um, the mum simply turned around and told me that she didn't, you know, what she does as a job is not enough to take care of her, of her baby. And it's just crazy what a simple, you know, little bottle can do to to prevent the loss of life is just unbelievable. This place is absolutely un unbelievable what we're seeing here. Over here there's, there's kids literally going through the rubbish pile at like 12, 11, 12, 13 years of age. Like finding pieces of scrap metal and stuff to go on and sell. What they're selling it for they probably don't know but they're just looking for as much money as they can get. I was, ju I was just starting like, you know, I was starting high school, like secondary school and when I was 12 or 13 it's just like, it's a million miles away, it's a whole other world out here. The smell is so strong. Oh, horrible that. I'm Niall. What, what are your aspirations? What do you dream to do? They want to get an education. These boys, all they want is an education. Sule wants to be a teacher. Uh, and Adrice wants to be a, a doctor. And at the moment, there is absolutely no hope for them. As you can see, simply no one deserves to live here. Meeting uh, Sully and Idris, they told us that their dream was to go to school. And when we went to the school today and seen, you know, the the atmosphere in the place, they they love, you know, just being there. And, you know, a lot of people, including myself, you know, I wasn't, didn't particularly like school. And I think, I think we've all learned that education is a massive part of what people want to do over here. kids three and four years of age, the teacher had them up singing and dancing, or in every class we go into anything the teacher says, they're at their full attention, it's, it's amazing to watch. It might not be much, but to these kids it's absolutely incredible, they're loving it here. These last two days have been, you know, definitely the best experience of my life, it's just been absolutely incredible. Every second of it, knowing that, you know, having that pride, you know, it's been an honour to be able to say that I've helped to raise money for Comic Relief and to help these people out. It's been amazing. Hi, I'm Zane from One Direction, and here's what happened when me and the boys went to Ghana for Comic Relief. <laughs> I can't do uh, I can't. Say hello. 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 Hi. <laughs> the main thing that massively stands out for me is just like, just, the, just how much I take for granted. Like, in terms of 
how simple things could be. Like if 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 everyone just helped out and like didn't just forget about when they see it on the TV for two seconds. Because I'm a culprit for it myself. Like I've seen it on TV, been upset for five ten minutes, and then pushed it to the back of my head. The smell is really bad and the heat is really bad and then there's people up here working and how they work is basically they have to melt down pieces of wire that they find um, for the copper inside of it. Hello. Hi, I'm Zane. Nice to meet you. To meet a person uh, like Christopher um, is just a massive eye opener. How old are you? You're 15 years old. This is this is what you do every day. Yes. Every day. What time do you get up in five the morning? Five. Five o'clock in the morning. Yes. And what time do you finish on on an evening? Six or seven. Six or seven. Yeah. Okay. This is the walk that Christopher has to do every day. He's worked for 12 hours and now he's walking back to his house um, on foot in his excruciating heat to go and have a bath. Got quite a bit of the journey left. I'm exhausted. I am a little bit embarrassed um, because I don't have the stamina to do it. I didn't get up at five this morning. I haven't been working 5% as much as these boys have been working on that field. I don't know how people do it. I honestly don't. I feel broken on the first day. This is your house? So this is where you live? Three people sleeping here. Uh, and they have absolutely zero electricity. I don't think I'll be forgetting Christopher. I think his face will be in my head forever. To come out here and and you know see this firsthand is is something else and I can't even put into words how how guilty I feel for things that I take for granted in my life. Yeah, it's been difficult at, at some times um, because uh, just just my emotions getting the better of me um, and making it quite difficult for me. Hello, oh, nice to meet you. So I've just been into the uh, ward. These kids are these kids are suffering from diarrhea and and pneumonia and and it's easily preventable. Um, you know, 60% of the, of, the, of the deaths caused here were caused by pneumonia and diarrhea, simple things that we can just go to the doctor and get, get vaccinated for and we're fine. If the child had been vaccinated, the child wouldn't have even need, needed to have been here in the first place. The vaccination is tiny, if I could show you it. It's literally this, here. This is what your money goes towards, and this could prevent this from happening, you know? It just seems like such a, such a small amount of money to make such a big difference. It's so hard. I've never seen anything, I've never experienced anything like this. Maybe he's not even a year old. I get, to, I get to go away from here and not come here on holiday and enjoy the weather and go, going home. I've come here, I've experienced what the people that live here go through on, on a daily basis. And now I've been given the opportunity to help them. Looking back to school when I was there, I never really wanted to be there. These kids are so... So you know, dedicated, and they and they love learning, and it's just amazing to see.
I'm so glad that I came out here. It's completely changed my perspective on life, everything. I just feel like a different person. It's amazing.